organisation is like a set of small towns. The people are different in every town and the roles are different, but there are more similarities than differences. These small towns are really tribes and they form so naturally it's as though our tribe is part of our genetic code. Tribes are collectives of people who in organisations get work done, sometimes a lot of work. Tribes are the basic building block of any large human effort. Some tribes demand excellence for everyone and are constantly evolving, and others are content to do the minimum to get by. So what makes the difference in performance? Well, I'm sure you know my answer to that. It's great leaders that will do that. It's tribal leaders. Great leaders focus on building the tribe and the tribe culture. They look like a leader, they sound like a leader, and they act like a leader. They're a role model for the organisational values and they understand human behaviour. They understand the importance of what they think, what they say and what they do. And they know that when you change the language and behaviour in your tribe, you change the tribe itself. If tribes are the most powerful vehicles within organisations, culture are their engines. So what is tribal leadership? What do I mean by this? Well, according to David Logan, John King and Haley Fisher Wright, tribal leaders focus their efforts on building the tribe. A tribal leader is someone who is actively upgrading the culture within their tribe. Actively is the key word there. A tribal leader is someone who knows that culture, someone who knows that culture is what makes the difference and figures out their tribe's current culture. There's someone who knows how to nudge their tribe from one stage to the next. Now that nudging and moving up stage by stage is going to be important today, so listen out for that. So let's have a look at the five stages of a tribe. Logan, King and Fisher Wright say that tribes evolve through five stages of development. At each cultural stage, there is a specific cultural fingerprint made up of the language that people use and observable behaviour toward others in the tribe. Each stage has its own way of speaking or theme that appears whenever people talk, email or joke around. You'll see the theme show up in survey results if you're doing that, like staff survey results or climate surveys, or just when they interact with each other. If people at stage one had t-shirts, they would read, life sucks, and what comes out of their mouths supports this. People at stage one are despairingly hostile and they band together to get ahead in in what they describe as an unfair world. Now luckily only 2% of teams are at this level and most organisations act quickly to expel these people. In 25% of workplace tribes the dominant culture is stage two, which is actually a quantum leap from stage one. People at this level use language centred on my life sucks rather than all life sucks and behave in a separate and apathetic way. Stage three is the dominant culture in 49% of workplace tribes and is reflected by I'm great language with the undertone of and you're not. The key words are I, me and mine and it's about personal domination, competitiveness and what's in it for me. Stage four represents 22% of tribes where the theme of people's communication is, we're great. There is a mood of tribal pride. Now, a we're great culture always has an adversary. So the full theme is, we're great and you're not, which usually refers to a competitor outside the organization. So famous ones here, like that would be Apple versus Microsoft, for example. Now in larger organisations, the competitor or the adversary might be a group within the same organisation and you've probably seen a bit of that, a bit of competitiveness within an organisation. Now stage four is where tribal leadership begins and relationships take the form of stable partnerships. Stage four is the launching pad for stage five, which reflects less than 2% of workplace cultures. Stage five's t-shirt would read, life's great and they haven't been using any illicit substances either. Their language revolves around potential and their noble cause, not to beat a competitor, but because doing so will make a big difference, possibly even a global impact. This stage is pure leadership, pure vision, inspiration, and high performance. 
Based on the research, most organisations have tribes that are a mixture of stages two, three and four, with most hovering around the dividing line between my life sucks and I'm great. And here's what results when you've got that. A battle ensues between the personal agenda-driven people at stage three and the vision-driven people at stage four, with those at stage two largely sitting back to see who wins. People complain about all the politics around here and there is a high level of frustration about why change is so hard to implement. Despite all the training provided, trust and communication are, are always the weak spots on staff surveys. So just think for a moment, does this sound familiar? The way to move the entire tribe's performance to the next level is to move the critical mass to the next stage. Now this process involves move, moving many people forward individually by facilitating them to use a different language and to shift their behaviour accordingly. Your role as a leader is to first locate where your tribe is at and to do this you need to listen to how most people talk and to notice how most people structure their work relationships in your team. To help you do this, let's have a look at each tribal stage in a bit more detail. I'll take you through each stage one by one. And after I've gone through each stage, I'll take you through some suggestions about how to upgrade from one level to the next.